what is it is right here welcome back to another reaction video this time I reacted to a, another infographic show um, video and this is about um, laughing Jack laughing Jack explained so <laughs> it's another creepy pasta explanation about who he is and why the only the only time I see laughing Jack is when he was in uh, the RPG horror game called creepy pasta land that was the only time I actually seen him so I have not actually looked up anything about him and whatnot, cause I didn't really, I don't really much know him, so. But looking him up, it might be better for me to do. But yeah, so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and this is about Laughing Jack, so. So let's just check this out, shall we? So I can learn a little bit more about him. <laughs> so make sure you like and subscribe, and check out this video and the infogra infographic show. I can't even say his name, his them whatever. Now, shall we act this thing right? It was Christmas Eve in the late 1800s in a small wooden home in the poor outskirts of London. Isaac, a seven-year-old boy, looks wistfully out the window into the dark night. He can see families celebrating together through the grimy windows of the apartments and homes around him, joyfully singing as they wait together in anticipation for the Christmas morning to come. In young Isaac's home, though, there was no singing, no warmth, and no celebrating. There's only the silence that normally pervades. Silence that's only occasionally broken by his mother's shrill voice calling for him to come and do some chore or to attend to his daily homeschooling lessons. Well, that is until inevitably Isaac's father comes home. He can always tell it's him by the heavy bootsteps that follow the front door dun, opening, dun, shuffling dun, and erratic. His dun, father dun. wavering and stumbling as he throws off his heavy overcoat and lurches toward a chair or straight to the bed. Sometimes he can hear his mother yelling at him, blaming him for spending their meager income on alcohol or other vices. He'll hear his father's thunderous response, and then the fighting really starts. In the morning, Isaac would exit his room to join his mother for breakfast <laughs> and discover him with a black eye or some other fresh bruise, staring out at the happy homes and saying goodbye to the warm singing of Christmas tunes from the families inside. Isaac retreated to his bed, covering himself with a threadbare blanket and surrendering to sleep. Shortly after sunrise, Isaac is awoken by a strange feeling. His nose twitched at a pleasant fragrance in his room, almost like a perfumed lady had walked by him on the street. It was a comforting, pleasant smell and familiar too. He thought he'd even felt the soft brush of lips on his cheek as if some flowered stranger had kissed him good morning before disappearing into the ether. Rubbing his eyes awake, Isaac found a large, garishly colored box sitting on his bedroom floor. This wasn't like any gift Isaac had ever received. His possessions were all worn and battered hand-me-downs from local churches and poor shops. His toys paint faded from long, sad years of neglect. No, this box was covered in fresh, bright paint and adorned with silly clown faces. The wood was perfectly sanded and expertly joined together, only a very thin seam revealing the lid on top with a small metal crank inside. Attached to the lid was a simple paper tag on which was written Isaac's name. As he examined the box, he noticed a small metal panel underneath laughing Jack in the Box. Yep. Isaac was confused. He'd heard of Jack in the yep. Boxes, but he never heard of a laughing it. Jack in the Box. Curious, Isaac began to, to turn the metal crank and heard the turning of gears from within. As the gears turned, a slow melody began to build, taking shape as Isaac sped up his cranking. Isaac recognized this tune. It was Pop Goes the Weasel, and giddily Pop Isaac began to sing weasel. along. Half a pound of tuppany rice, half a pound of treacle, that's the way the money goes, Pop Goes the Weasel. Isaac was laughing along to his singing and winced as he finished the final verse, tensing his body for the expected jack-in-the-box to come springing out. But as the song ended and Isaac stopped cranking, nothing happened. Sighing, Isaac put the box back down on the floor. It was wonderfully decorated, but broken. As he changed out of his sleep clothes, Isaac was suddenly startled by a rattling noise coming from within the box. Eyes wide in surprise, Isaac stared as the box began violently shaking. Then suddenly the box top burst open with a puff of colorful smoke and an explosion of confetti. From the smoke, a figure hopped out and oh. bent at the waist to an exaggerated bow in front of Isaac. Dressed in colorful and ill-fitting clothes, with bright red hair and a swirly rainbow-colored nose, the foppish clown against. held his exaggerated bow before Isaac, before snapping back up and spreading his arms wide. Come one, come hey, all, whether kids. big or small, to hey, see the best kids. clown of them all. The one, the only, laughing Jack in a box. Isaac's eyes went wide with delight. Who, who are you? Why, I'm your new best friend, Isaac. I'm Laughing Jack, the bestest clown of all the bestest clowns that's ever clowned. And you and I are going to be best pals for the rest of your life. We can play together? Isaac asked. 
He never had a friend and barely left his room on a fear of his abusive mother and father. Play? Well, we can do more than play. I know every game in the world, even the ones that haven't been invented yet. And to boot, wow. I'm a whiz at the accordion and know every song that's ever been sung. With a magical puff of smoke, an oversized accordion appeared in the clown's arms, and he began to play the instrument, albeit very, very poorly. His singing voice wasn't much better, but Isaac was <laughs> delighted and fell over in laughter. But then, though, the fun and games came to an end as Isaac's mother called out for him. Isaac told his new best friend that he wouldn't be able to play this morning. There was homeschooling and endless chores to be done. Maybe, though, he could see him again tonight? Isaac asked. Laughing, Jack smiled at Isaac, pinching him on the cheek. You can see me tonight and every day from now on. We'll be best pals forever. Basically, just, Smiling, just all day out of his day, room as his mother's insane. voice again rang out, this time louder and angrier. That yeah. night, Laughing Jack was true to his word, waiting for Isaac as he returned. Isaac and Jack played together every chance they could, and no matter how loud they got, Jack's magic kept Isaac's parents from hearing. One day, unable to hold it in any longer, Isaac finally told his mother about his new magical friend, but she just shushed him. Such things are <laughs> fantasies, child. You ought to keep such nonsense to yourself. Isaac was crestfallen, but as the afternoon neared, he couldn't help himself and pleaded with his mother to come meet Jack. Relenting, she followed Isaac to his room. She opened the door and discovered nothing. No Jack and no wonderfully colored wooden box either. Isaac's mother gave him a swift smack across the face. I am tired of this childish silliness. Now you're to stay in your room without supper for the evening. The door slammed behind her, leaving a dejected Isaac alone in his room. I'm sorry, Joe. Isaac turned to see Jack there. I'm not supposed to let anyone else see me. Just you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for you. But Jack's words were cut off as Isaac threw himself on the clown, wrapping his arms around him. A giant smile spread across his clown face. Jack hugged his best friend back, holding him tightly as hot tears streamed down Isaac's cheeks. Playing with Jack every day, Isaac's loneliness and home troubles were soon forgotten. One day, though, as the two played pirates in the back garden, Isaac spotted the neighbor's cat prowling across the grass. Ahoy, matey! We got ourselves an enemy spy off the starboard bow! Snatch him up first, mate Jack, or I'll make you walk the plank! Isaac called out. <laughs> aye, aye, Captain! I'll pluck you on the bilge rat right out of the water! Jack's arms began to extend, reaching out and snatching up the terrified cat. As the two laughed and giggled going back and forth in their best pirate speech, Jack became caught up in the game. His arms continued to coil around the helpless cat tighter and tighter until finally, snap! The small, sharp sound stunned Isaac and Jack quickly returned his arms to normal, dropping the dead cat to the floor, oh its goodness. neck clearly broken. Horrified, Jack gaped at the dead creature. Why, I, I, I didn't mean to. But Jack's words were cut off by an uproarious laughter. Isaac's <laughs> cheeks flushed red as he laughed at the dead cat. Looks like cats wow. don't have nine lives. Nervously, Jack began to chuckle as well. Isaac grabbed the cat and flung it over the fence into the neighbor's yard. That wow. evening, however, Isaac's father's thunderous voice summoned him from his room. Jack pressed his ear to the door to listen, but couldn't make anything, save for Isaac's crying. After what seemed like an eternity, Isaac shuffled back into the room, closing the door behind him. The cat had been discovered, and Isaac was to blame, but he was now being sent off to a boarding school for unruly children, where he would stay until he finished his education. His drunk father claimed it was to discipline Isaac, but he knew the truth. His father hated him and always wanted him gone. If his mother had objections, she didn't voice them. Tearfully, Isaac bid his best friend goodbye, telling him he would be unable to take any of his personal belongings with him. Jack returned to his box, promising to still be there when Isaac returned one day. The weeks soon turned to months and into years. From within his box, Jack was still aware of the outside world, and despite the long, disappointing wait for his best friend, couldn't help but perk up every time he heard the front door open. Hopeful it was Isaac, but it never was. It was Isaac's father coming home night after night, each it seemed drunker than the last. As the years passed, Jack's colored makeup and clothing faded along with his hopes. The once colorful clown turned into a sad, monochrome version of his old self. The memories of his happy times with Isaac seeming That's more probably how he ended up black and white. Now. One night, there was the usual drunken sound of boots stumbling into the house, followed by yelling and fighting. This time, though, Jack heard a scream, oh, cut yeah, short by nice. a swift, heavy thump, and Jack heard Isaac's mother's voice no more. The next morning, the constable arrived with a squad of armed men taking Isaac's father away for the murder of his wife. He too would be dead within the week. Jeez. The home lay empty and forgotten for what seemed like an eternity after that. Jack was aware of every passing second in his lonely prison. Suddenly, one night, the sound of the front door opening raised Jack from his dreary vigil. Expecting to hear the heavy, shuffling sound of drunken footsteps, Jack heard something different instead, lighter footsteps, two of them, and the sound of a young woman's giggle. Also, the voice of a man familiar yet unrecognizable to Jack. 
The duo Jersey? entered Isaac's room, and Jack immediately recognized his old best friend. It is now him. a fully grown man. Had it really been that long? Jack couldn't believe it. Just how much time had he spent in his lonely box? Jack called out to Isaac. I'm here, right here, just like I said I'd be. But his voice echoed off the invisible walls of his prison, stuck as he had been for years on the top of a dusty old dresser. Isaac and his new friend moved toward his old bed, and Jack's eyes narrowed. Who was this person taking Isaac's attention away from him? Isaac had promised to come back to set him free so they could dance and sing and play together again, but now here he was after so many lonely years, but he was ignoring Jack, and it was all this woman's fault. The two giggled together until the woman accidentally knocked a glass onto the floor, breaking it. Isaac's face suddenly changed, taking on the look of his dead father. Isaac went into a rage, yelling and screaming at the woman just as his father had done to his mother so many nights. Jack listened to Isaac's screams becoming be louder like your father, and angrier Isaac. until like suddenly, your thump, and then it was quiet. A bloody candlestick was on the ground next to the woman, who now lay dead on the floor. After 13 long years, a slow, thin smile began to spread across Jack's face. My, my, what a wonderful little game, Jack mused to himself. Still huh. forgotten on the shelf, Jack watched as over the next few days, Isaac used his learned skills as an upholsterer to fashion the remains of the young woman into a small leather chair. Her tanned skin what? was turned into leather, stretched over a frame made from her own bones. Everything else that remained of her was dissolved in caustic chemicals and poured into the sewer to be washed away. Over the next few weeks, Isaac grew his macabre collection of human furniture. Sometimes it was rude children who'd been nasty to him in public, abducted and dragged back into Isaac's torture chamber in a large burlap sack. Other times it was ladies of the night, paid Why? for their services only to end up as another piece in Isaac's collection. The pain and loneliness of the little boy he'd once been had festered in his heart, fed by terrible abuse from the adults at his boarding school, and created a terrible cancer within him. This malice slowly infected Laughing Jack as well, and he began to look forward to witnessing fresh torture sessions, still trapped helplessly inside the box. But Laughing Jack longed yeah. even more to play the wonderful new games Isaac had been teaching him. One night, the rough frame with restraints Isaac had fashioned for his victims collapsed on one side, knocking into the forgotten dresser now home to not just Jack's prison, but an array of torture implements. Oh, is, is Jack's box open? teetered for a moment before finally falling with a crash onto the filthy, bloodied floor, along with some of Isaac's oh, tools. Dead Curiously, open. Isaac entered the room, eyeing the collapsed Hoping frame with a sigh. It. Picking up the ice picks, razors, and other torture instruments, Isaac's hand stopped upon discovering the box. How curious, he thought to himself. Memories flooding back. There you go. His now rough, you calloused got hands worked over the forgotten box. Its bright colors faded with age. Wooden panels warped with neglect. The hand crank was still there, though, and Isaac began to turn it for the first time in over 13 years. That familiar song began to play, though distorted. The delicate gears inside rusted and worn. Isaac couldn't help but singing along, though, once more, slow, and matched the tortured, labored melody. Half a pound of tuppenny rice, half a pound of treacle. That's the way the body goes. Pop goes the weasel. Isaac didn't flinch this time, as he had once in his youth. He looked down at the box as the melody ground to a halt, then simply shrugged his shoulders, and tossing the box to a dark corner of the room, busied himself with tidying up his torture tools. Isaac. Uh -oh. A low, rasping voice sent a deathly chill up Isaac's spine. As he slowly turned to face it, eyes wide in disbelief, as he couldn't believe it, there he was, laughing Jack or at least some horribly twisted, shadowy version of himself. It's the clown's me. fiery red hair was pitch black now. The outrageous colors and makeup faded into monochrome. His spiral yeah. red nose now shaped into a cruel spike, face the same deathly pale of Isaac's victims. You, you can't be real, you were just imaginary, Isaac cried out, feeling the same growing terror no. that many of his victims must have felt. Oh, I'm real, Isaac, I always was. Remember, best buds, you and I, for the rest of your life. I've been waiting to play fun games with my best bud. Oh, Isaac, I've waited so long. And now you're back and you've taught me such delicious games to play. Jack's arms stretched once more as they had years ago to wrap around a helpless, struggling feline. As they wrapped around Isaac, though, where once had been just a silly game that had gotten out of hand, there was now malicious intent, the snake-like arms wrapping tighter and tighter around Jack's former playmate. The playmate that had abandoned him, the best friend that had left him to wither and shrivel up alone for years and years, then come home only to ignore him. A series of audible pops rang out as Isaac's ribs snapped one by one under immense pressure. Jack let go and Isaac's body crumpled to the floor. Ragged hoarse breaths came from Isaac, his body broken but still alive. 
With a wicked grin spreading across Jack's face, he stepped forward out of the darkness. Jack had been this waiting revenge. to play for a long time. Revenge now the there was nobody to interrupt him anymore. Oh, that's it. <laughs> it just ends like that? Really? It just ends no more. And it just ends like that. Okay. Alright, so I guess that's the end of the video, I guess. That, I, that was the whole video. So. It ends and show like, in, like an outro or something. It just ends like that. Oh, I just broke his body and then boom. That's it. So. Well. <laughs> I guess that's it. I guess that. So. Uh, that was... Kind of a, a little bit of a backstory about Laughing Jack. I didn't know he was from a box, honestly. Like a between Jack in the box or whatever. But uh, now I know if that's true or not. There you guys go. So the video just stopped at the very end like this. So I'm like, that's it. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's it. But anyways, guys, uh, make sure to like and subscribe and check out uh, Infographic Show in this video, I guess. Sorry that the video ended like that. I don't know. I didn't expect it ended just like that. So, but yeah. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs> Alright, guys. Goodbye.